You may know of different tests that are used for a variety of purposes. High school students take the SAT or ACT for applying to a college. After graduation, they may take a graduate record examination to get into graduate school or take licensure tests in specific disciplines to obtain a job. One commonality between those tests is they are all large-scale standardized tests. The reason we call them standardized tests is because the items are developed, administered and scored in the same way for all test takers. Those tests are artisan products from people in the field of educational measurement, thus represent tests of high technical quality. So, why do those tests have high quality? What steps have they gone through to develop those tests prior to allowing test takers to use them? In this video, let's follow Aaron and see how he develops a make-believe standardized test, the Aaron Personal Trainer Test. The gym planet is full of people with a strong passion to train in the gym, and many of them claim to be personal trainers who can help others get fit. But some of them are not really qualified to train people. Aaron, the Prime Minister of Gym Planet, decides to develop a personal trainer test and insists that a person needs to pass the test in order to officially become a personal trainer. He takes out his personal treasure the roadmap to build a test, a gift from a group of measurement experts on Earth. The map details the nine steps he needs to enact. Step 1. Define test's construct and use. What are the things needed for someone to succeed as a personal trainer? Aaron invites experts such as currently successful trainers, teachers at personal training schools and other knowledgeable persons in the fitness industry to come together and define what are the requisite knowledge and skills for working as a personal trainer. He also specifies the goal of the test, to classify people into two categories, qualified and unqualified. The goal is different to ranking candidates from most to least qualified or selecting the best trainer on the planet. His specific goal of classification helps determine what kinds of items he is going to develop. Step 2. Decide item goals. How many items should Aaron develop for the test? Are the items going to be traditional items, such as multiple choice items, or simulated tasks on the computer, where test takers given specific training guidance to simulated clients, or real client encounters, where candidates will be scored as they coach standardized clients in real life scenarios? In determining this, Aaron needs to consider available capital and resources that he has. Step 3. Decide administration issues. Aaron needs to figure out when and where the test can be taken, as well as how long the test will take. For example, will candidates go to a test-taking centre? Or will they take the test in their own gym with a qualified person giving the test? Will the test be taken on paper or on a computer? Will all test takers see the same items or will the test items adapt to each person such that how one responds to one item informs which item they will see next? Will candidates be allowed to retake the test if they do not like their first test score? Aaron needs to make many decisions about how to administer the test in a way that helps him to fairly classify candidates as either qualified or unqualified to be a personal trainer. Step 4. Decide required tasks. After finishing the design for the entire test, it's time to focus on writing the items. The first question Aaron asks is, what specific observable behaviours are going to be assessed through the items? He needs the content expert panel to discuss which types of tasks a qualified entry-level personal trainer needs to possess and what are the critical errors that trainers should avoid in order to not harm their clients. The ultimate product of this stage is a list of tasks that the items are going to be developed upon. Step 5. 
develop a test blueprint. A test blueprint would include, for example, how many items are needed under each skill area and how much each item will count towards the final score. It also includes the desired level of difficulty. For example, questions asking about a definition such as what is an exercise plan are easier than questions asking about candidates to develop a sample exercise plan for a client with diabetes. Ultimately, Aaron probably wants items that are not too hard because the purpose of this test is to select candidates who meet the minimum qualifications to be a personal trainer. If Aaron had a different test purpose, such as locating the highest performing personal trainers, his test blueprint would look different. Step 6. Write and review items. Ultimately, physical training experts are going to write the items, and Aaron needs to train those experts to write items according to the blueprint. Each item goes through the process of being drafted, edited, and reviewed by different groups of experts. After individual items are finalized, Aaron needs to review all the items to make sure they do not duplicate each other or reveal answers to one another. Step 7. Pre-test. After items are reviewed and finalized, Aaron cannot directly put the items into the real test because he needs to make sure that items are not biased towards certain groups of examinees. The way to identify biased items is to pre-test them with candidates. Pre-testing can also help Aaron understand item characteristics, such as the difficulty of items, which can help determine which items should be assembled in one test form. Pre-testing is usually done through embedding pre-testing items in real tests. If you took a standardized test in grade school or a college admissions test, you likely took several pre-testing items even if you weren't aware of it. Step 8. Set standards. Before candidates take the test, Aaron needs the expert panel to figure out where to draw the line between qualified and unqualified. There are many ways that experts can decide where the cut-off line should be. For example, Aaron can order items based on their difficulty, and experts can decide how far along those ranked items the minimally qualified personal trainer should succeed with the correct answers. Later, Aaron will need to conduct continuous studies to ensure that the cutoff line was a valid predictor of performance as a personal trainer. Step 9. Protect item security. A potential risk of any high-stakes test is cheating. There are many ways to try to prevent cheating, but a critical step is to make sure that the test takers have not seen the test items before taking the test. Aaron needs to develop a comprehensive plan to prevent items from leaking during the item development process and administration process and to detect cheating. Now Aaron has finished all the steps on the roadmap and developed his exquisite Aaron personal trainer test. He's done, right? Well, not exactly. A test is like a living organism. It needs new items all the time to prevent cheating. And it may become outdated in terms of its ability to qualify candidates. Ultimately, the field of personal training is evolving and the persons who need personal training are changing. The test also must be evolving and changing. Aaron must recognize that all nine steps are iterative and he will have to go back to all or some of the steps, not only in the development of the first test, but also in the evolvement of the test over time. This is a good thing, even though it makes Aaron's job difficult. After all, wouldn't you be disappointed to find out that the SAT was the same test as it was 30 years ago? The skills needed to succeed in college are constantly changing and the persons wanting to go to college are changing as well. So the SAT must evolve and if we ever find out that it is not serving its purpose well, it must change. Measurement experts spend their careers ensuring that standardized tests serve their purpose well and adapt to the times in ways that are fair to all the test takers.